Hi everyone, I'm Any New Province, and this week we're playing Boggles for Net Benefits, the series where we explore the benefits of net decking in Popper. Boggles is an archetype that exists in many of Magic's formats. The idea is you play a hexproof creature, a creature that can't be targeted by your opponent's spells or abilities, and then you put a ton of auras on it to turn it into a massive unanswerable threat. Aside from merely pronouncing its name, this deck is a huge point of contention for Magic players. Some people say that it's a great choice for an unknown metagame, while others simply groan every time they they see it across the table from them. I can imagine lots of Shadow Mirage's opponents were groaning as they took this deck to a top 8 finish in the Popper Challenge this weekend. I'm going to start off my deck tech of Shadow Mirage's Boggles by talking about arguably the most important piece of any hexproof strategy, the Boggles. First we have Slippery Boggle, which costs 1 green or blue hybrid mana for a 1-1 beast with hexproof. Our other 1-drop Boggle is essentially the same as Slippery Boggle, except that it doesn't have blue in its mana cost, it's Glade Cover Scout, it costs 1 green mana for a 1-1 one, one elf scout with hexproof. Having 8 1 mana boggles is super important, we can get these creatures down early enough that we can start boggling them up, creating other creatures to sacrifice to edicts, and getting these creatures out of the way of wrath effects like Pestilence, Evancar's Justice, and Electricery before our opponent has enough mana to cast them. Having enough boggles on board to fade edicts and wrath effects is just half the battle, we're also trying to build a massive threat on a hexproof creature, that's why we've included three more in Solana Ledgewalker. Solana Ledgewalker costs one and a green for a 1-1 one, one hexproof and can't be blocked except by creatures with flying. The evasion is actually pretty relevant in this deck. We do have ways to give our creatures trample to sneak damage through, but it's kind of an inconsistent deck without much draw power. With Solana Ledgewalker, we'll have the opportunity to create a huge evasive creature whether it has trample or not. Our last creature is Aura Gnarled, which, while it doesn't have hexproof, provides a little bit bit more of that much needed evasion while synergizing very well with all of the auras in our deck. Aura Gnarled costs 2 and a green for a 2-2 beast. Creatures with power less than Aura Gnarled's power can't block it, that's that evasion I was talking about. While the evasion's nice, what makes Aura Gnarled truly powerful in our deck is that it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each aura on the battlefield, and we're going to have a ton of those. Auras are a massive part of our strategy. Next, I'm going to break down the ones that pay you off just for playing more enchantments while also providing a bit of extra utility. First we have Ethereal Armor, which costs 1 white for an aura that gives enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 for each enchantment you control and gives that creature first strike. Just like Aura Gnarled, any creature that's enchanted with Ethereal Armor is going to get massive very quickly because of all the enchantments we have on the battlefield. The first strike is also pretty relevant and turns any creature with an Ethereal Armor on it into a very good blocker. We're also running Ancestral Mask, which is sort of like a really pumped up version of Ethereal Armor. It costs 2 and green for an aura to give enchanted creature plus two plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield. The rest of our enchantments may not be huge haymakers like ethereal armor and ancestral mask, but they're really helpful because they give our opponents either reach or protection. First we have armadillo cloak, which costs one green white for an aura that gives enchanted creature plus two plus two and trample. With a restrictive mana cost like one green white, it probably wouldn't be worth it to just give a creature plus two plus two and trample with armadillo cloak, but it also gives the creature some kind of pseudo lifelink. Some boggles are a little bit flimsy, making it harder for us to continuously attack into our opponent. This next card helps us attack into blockers that would normally trade with our boggle while allowing us to keep it. That spell is Hyena Umbra. It costs 1 white for an aura that gives enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 and first strike, but it also has the Totem Armor ability. Totem Armor means if enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy Hyena Umbra. Next up is Cartouche of Solidarity, which costs 1 white to give enchanted enchanted creature plus one plus one and first strike. The thing that makes Cartouche of Solidarity so much better than other auras in this category is that when it enters the battlefield you create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance. Not only does Cartouche of Solidarity provide a warm body to sacrifice to edicts, it also gives us a creature to target with all of our aura spells if the worst happens and we run out of boggles. Of course we're running the best green aura in the popper format, Rancor. It costs one green to give enchanted creature plus two plus zero 
Zero and Trample. What makes Rancor so amazing is that when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you get to return Rancor to its owner's hand. This means that even if our opponent can remove a Boggle, or if we have to trade it aggressively in combat, we still get Rancor back to start boggling up the next Hexproof creature. Our last aura that targets a creature is Cartouche of Strength for a little bit of added interaction. Cartouche of Strength costs 2 and a green to give Enchanted Creature plus 1, plus 1, and Trample, but the best part about this is, when Cartouche of Strength enters the battlefield, you may have Enchanted Creature fight target creature and opponent controls, usually effectively removing that creature. The rest of our enchantments are dedicated to ramp and mana fixing. We are playing some 3 drops and we are playing 2 colored spells in a deck that's only running 18 lands. Our first fixer is Utopia Sprawl, which costs 1 green mana to enchant a forest. When Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, battlefield you choose a color. Whenever the enchanted forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of the chosen color. Our last non-land cards are more fixing in abundant growth. They cost one green mana, and when they enter the battlefield you get to draw a card. You enchant a land with them. When you tap that enchanted land, you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Alright, let's have a look at this mana base. First, we have two copies of Colony Garden to create more Edict Fodder. Colony Garden enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield you create a zero 1 green plant creature token. If Colony Garden's untapped, you can tap it for green mana. The rest of our non-basics are just four copies of Blossoming Sands. Your standard popper duels in green and white. They enter the battlefield tapped. When they enter the battlefield, you gain one life, and if they're untapped, you can tap them for green or white. Alright, let's have a look at this sideboard. It's a little greedier on colored mana because we're running a ton of mana fixing. First, we have two copies of Lifelink, just in case we're up against an ultra-fast deck like Burn, and we have to turn one of our boggles into a lifelinking one. We have two copies of Gut Shot for killing those tireless tribes after they're flipped inside out or killing an important elf. We have two copies of Natural State for blowing up our opponent's Journey to Nowheres or Oblivion Rings on an aura we care about. We have two Young Wolves for soaking up our opponent's Edict effects. We have one copy of Relic of Progenitus for hating those Edicts out of graveyards. We have two copies of Standard Bearer for picking up all of our opponent's auras and pump spells. We have two copies of Flaring Pain for fighting through Moments Peace and Prismatic Strands. We have one copy of Cartouche of Strength if we have to kill our opponent's creatures so that they don't kill us, and we have one copy of Crufix's Insight for a ton of card draw in those more controlling matchups. And there it is, Boggles by Shadow Mirage. Congratulations again on your top 8 finish in the challenge this weekend. We're going to take this deck into a league at twitch.tv slash anynewprovince, where they're every Monday night at 7pm Atlantic time playing competitive popper decks. Before I go, I just want to remind you that you can like the video or subscribe to the channel down below. I'd seriously appreciate it. It's a great way to let me know you've enjoyed everything, and it really encourages me to keep making great popper content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech, and hopefully I'll see you on Monday night.